In this recording we're looking at how to work with a template and we're looking for a bootstrap template and the one we're going to be using is this start bootstrap so start bootstrap.com and on this page we don't want the pro or ones because we don't want to pay for it we're looking for free and there are a lot available we're going to be using the agency one here you can download it right away using this link or you can preview it. The preview lets you see what it looks like on a desktop or on a tablet or on a phone. It's nice and responsive and flexible. So from here we can also do the free download. So I'm going to do that here up in the corner. And then finding that in my finder Make sure it's on your desktop and unzip it. And we're going to hide Chrome here. So it gives me this folder. And inside the folder we have assets. They have an IMG folder already with the images that they use in the template, along with a separate folder for logos and things. I prefer to make my own images folder on the top level. and we'll notice that there's a CSS folder with a basic style sheet in it and our core index file. So I'm going to make a duplicate of that index file and I'm going to rename that right away. And I can preview my page in the browser and make sure I navigate to the one that I just named with my last name and there I can see it looks exactly like the template because I haven't changed anything so let's go ahead and change some stuff so I will open my file in my plain text editor and the easiest first change to make is line 8 with the title. So once I save that and refresh my page, it'll change the tab name to reflect the title. So I know that I can confirm that this is the page that I'm working on. So with the template, if you're in Google Chrome, we can go to View, Developer, Developer Tools, and that shows me my tools thing here. So uh, my view here, I have the HTML and then the styles here. If I use this little selector tool, as I hover over things, it shows me what their HTML element is, any classes or names, and the styles that are affecting how they look. So I'm just going to go over this text here. So it shows me the div masthead-subheading. So it's division with a class of masthead-subheading. And it shows me the color and the font and all those things that are happening. So I'm actually going to click on that and it changes the computed styles here. And as I look down here, I'm going to pick something fairly easy and see if I can change the color of that type. So as I go down here, I don't see anything having to do with the color. There's the typeface. Down here, it shows the color. So under header dot masthead, there's the CSS rule that deals with the color. I can turn off the color and it shows me what it would be by default controlled by some other element or CSS rule or I can keep it on and with colors in particular I can just click on the little box here and pick a new color see what it would do okay nice scary red and that changes uh, what it shows me what that computed color would be and it shows me it's in the main style sheet uh, dot CSS and the line number. So there's you know 11,000 plus lines there. That's a lot. So we're going to copy the CSS rule directly from Chrome Developer Tools. Make sure you get the whole thing. And I'm going to copy that to my clipboard and go to my text editor and make a new file, new text document. And I'm just going to paste that right in. 
So the only line that I'm trying to change is the color. So I'm going to delete all the other lines here. Make sure I retain the CSS selector exactly as I copied it and the opening brace, closing brace, and the full line including its semicolon ending. So now that I have that, this is untitled, I'm going to go ahead and save it. And I need to make sure that I save it to exactly the same place. So here's my new page, here's the existing style sheet in the CSS folder, this is where I want to put it. So I'm going to rename this and make sure I put manually the .css ending. Okay, now that I've saved it as a CSS file, it changes the color coding within my text editor. Okay, to actually get this to apply to my page, so right now if I refresh this, it's going to go back to its default without that color change. And within this file, which I have open, it is looking for that style sheet here on line 17. So this line, uh, the link with the reference uh, inside the CSS folder, it's looking at styles.css for all of its style sheet related things. So I highlight this line, I'm going to copy it and paste a copy right in after it and I'm going to tell it to look also at mine babcock-styles.css and save this file so that now when I go back here and I refresh the page it's going to use that single CSS rule that I did in my style sheet to make the masthead color that red color and it's going to do that. So it does all the basic styles in the main style sheet and then my exception style is going to be here. So for most of the things we do we do not want to change the main style sheet because it's monstrously big and complex and we want to keep track of exactly the changes we make in our own smaller tighter style sheet. So uh, I do have example uh, custom style sheets with the kinds of things we're going to want to change. Like in this particular one I have, there's only 500 lines of example styles to change as opposed to the existing style sheet, which is, let's open it up and see. So this one has... 11,766 lines. That's a lot to sort through. So that's why we like to have a, a shorter style sheet with just our changes so we can keep track of what's going on. Okay, so that's the basics of what we're going to be doing and adding our own images, creating our own styles to make this a totally custom web page.